let's talk about blood typing. When we're looking at blood typing, we're going to look at two different parts. We're going to look at the red blood cell, the RBC, otherwise known as the erythrocyte. Those are one of the formed elements in blood. And we're also going to look at the plasma antibodies. We're going to look at two different parts. On the red blood cell, which is a biconcave disc that increases surface area, there are these little protein spikes that stick out. They look like proteins. Well, these little subjects or these little objects that stick out, these are known as antigens. They're known as antigens. Antibodies, antigens. I want to make sure you keep these separate. One's in the plasma, one's on the cell. What we have found is that there are four major groups. There's type A blood, type B blood, a combination of A and B, and there are some that don't have any at all. We refer to that as type O. Okay? These are the antigens that we find. Well, these antibodies that we find in the plasma are also known as agglutinins. Agglutinins will cause agglutination. They're going to be opposite of the type of antigen that's present. So for type A blood, the agglutinin is anti B. These agglutinins will react with any type of B blood that's introduced into that system and it will cause agglutination. It's an immune response. It's not a clot. Well, if type A has anti-B, B will have anti-A. We can't have anti-A on AB blood because it would break down half of the blood cells. That wouldn't work. For B, that wouldn't work either. So we can't have either of these antis in this blood, so the agglutinins that are present there are none. It doesn't have any. These are going to come back into play in just a bit. Well, for type O, they don't have either of these, so they're going to have anti-A and anti-B. Anti-A and anti-B. Well, what that is going to do is it's going to set us up for a situation where we can donate to or receive from. A blood has anti-B, so we cannot donate any type of A blood to somebody who's B, and anybody who is B cannot receive A blood because they're anti-A. So what that means is that A can donate to A blood because they're going to match, of course, and A can also donate to AB blood. AB blood. The reason why it can donate to AB blood is because there's no anti-A present on those agglutinins. There are no anti-A antibodies. Let me correct that. It looks terrible. There we go. A little bit more clear. B can donate to B blood, of course, and it can also donate to AB. AB blood can donate to AB, but it cannot donate to A because of the anti-B. That won't work. It cannot donate to B blood because of the anti-A. That won't work. And it cannot donate to O because it's anti-A and anti-B. So it can only donate to AB blood. O can be donated, of course, to O, because it's the same. But O doesn't have any antigens in it. Because it doesn't show any of those antigens, there's nothing to react with anti-B. So we can donate to A blood. There's no anti-A, so we can donate to B blood. And there's nothing to react with AB, so it can donate to AB blood as well. It's going to be slightly opposite for the reverse. To receive from A, we're going to have A blood, because of course they're going to match, but we can also receive O. A can receive O blood as well. B can receive B blood and from O. AB can receive A. B, A, B, and O. 
O-type blood can only receive O-type blood. Can you think of the reason why? Why can O only receive O blood? If you give O blood to O, that's good. But if you give O type blood A, remember it's got anti A. If you give it B, it's got anti B. And if you give it AB, it's got anti A and anti B. So it'll break it down. It'll cause agglutination one more time. We have one other factor in here. One other antigen. It's called the RH factor. Known as the rhesus factor. The RH factor is either going to be positive, if it's present, or negative, if it's not present. What that means is you can have A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, A B positive, A B negative, O positive, or O negative. If we just look at the positives and the negatives, if we have RH, let me move this up. If we have RH positive, it can donate to RH positive, but it cannot donate to negative because it would break it down. If we have RH negative, it can donate to RH positive or negative. So what can it receive? RH positive can receive RH positive or negative because there's nothing there. RH negative can only receive RH negative blood. So AB positive can receive A negative, A positive, O positive, and O negative. But we can now combine this information with this information to show what it can receive from or donate to. Just make sure that you understand those positives and negatives. Well, why does that really matter? Well, half the blood positive, half the blood negative. Half the blood will not be available for a donation or a reception. So we have to be very careful when we're typing blood. One last situation is if mom is RH negative and dad is RH positive. If the baby develops RH positive blood, then the baby, I'm going to write baby, will then create an immune response through mom against the baby's own blood. It's called erythroblastosis fetalis. Okay. That's a situation where there's an immune response against the baby's own red blood cells. Unfortunately, it's going to be a fatal situation, which makes it harder and harder for subsequent births for mom. A subsequent pregnancy, I should say. Well, where does all of this come from? It comes from the genetics. If you're done with blood typing, you can stop the video now. But if you want to continue on, learn it just a little bit more. Here we go. Where does all of this come from? This all stems from the genotype. Make sure I'm writing where you can see it. Which is going to be shown through mom and dad. Well, what does that mean? Well, we have two alleles. We have IA, IA for type A blood. We can also have IA, IO. That will also lead to A type blood. Well, what does this really mean? You get one of these from mom, and you get one of these from dad. So if dad is type A blood, mom is type A blood, baby will be born with type A. If mom is type A, dad is type O, baby could still be type A. There's another situation, and we'll do each one for type B. Those are going to be type B blood. What happens, though, when we have... A and B, or the reverse, of course, we get AB blood. Why does this happen? It's because of genetic codominance. This is codominant. 
or codominance. B and A are both dominant alleles. Type O is recessive. And I'll write that down in just a second. Okay, just help you out. Well, what if we've got type O and type O? That will give us type O. This is the only way that will work is type O. Which means we're going to find the phenotype. This is the genotype. This is the phenotype. And then we're going to look at the antigens that we find on the red blood cell. Again, it's going to line up with this. So type A, the antigen is type A. B has type B. The antigen found on type AB is A and B. A and B. On type O, there aren't any, so we write none. There are no antigens on the type O, specifically for these uh, major blood groups. So once again, IA and IB, those are dominant. IO is recessive. And that's why when we get one allele from mom and one allele from dad, that helps us to determine what antigens we're going to find in our blood, and those antigens will then lead up to where we can donate our blood. That's why it's important for us to understand that our erythrocytes, our red blood cells, have antigens, our plasma have the agglutinins, which are our plasma antibodies, and where we can donate. Feel free, if you have questions, write your questions down, I'll be happy to answer those for you. You guys have a great day.